Hello and welcome to the Heresy Lodge. I am your host, Dylan Cooper, with a constant co-host over here. Gavin Franklin. And guys, we are here to preview for you good old Deliverance Lost. This is the day. The yep. day we kind of, we get back into the swing of like big important books back to back to back. Yeah, and things that I feel like actually matter, which is really nice because I feel like it's been a bit. It has been a bit. And we haven't really seen like huge serious lore impacts and like we're back into what's going on in the war yeah and this is from gav thorpe i don't think this is his first book i think he's done a couple short stories but that was it yeah i think that makes sense i can't remember the short story he did i think he did the dark angels one and uh tales of heresy okay. i think he also did oh he, he did, did one in... he did the raven guard one and oh uh, yeah the most recent one which was age of darkness age of darkness yeah that's yeah. what we pointed that out like oh he does deliver it's lost um so yeah uh he does some other stuff going forward he does the korax book that makes sense mm -hmm. very interested in that book but yeah so before we dive in though let's go ahead and do a little bit of housekeeping sure um we by the time you hear this episode i will be on vacation I believe Gavin should have a video coming out on the YouTube as well. Very shortly. It might even be out before this comes out. Perfect. So, so look forward to that. That should be on getting started in Warhammer. Yep. It was a fun time to do. Um, if you want to chat with us, talk to just talk to us, I guess. Ask questions. Mm -hmm. Shoot the shit, you know, whatever. We all do the same things. Yes. <laughs> uh, you can do that by joining our Discord. It is pinned to our Twitter at Heresy Lodge. You can also tweet at us. Uh, we are on the YouTube. Like and subscribe. Leave some comments. We'll reply to those. You can also email us at theheresylodge at gmail.com. I wonder if there's a way we can we can work out to make it our Discord is accessible not through Twitter. You know, like maybe we can post it on Spotify or Apple Podcasts in the description or something like that. Like, you might want to look forward to doing that or something. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Because our Discord gets weird. It got weird today. I made it weird. It did get weird today. Because you have weird dreams. <laughs> if you want to know about my dreams, check the Discord. <laughs> yeah, but other than that, I think we're good to just kind of hop into Deliverance Lost here. Um, Just as, like, a quick preview, I enjoyed this. I enjoyed it, too. It wasn't my favorite. I think there was a lot of, like, weak points in the book. Um, but... It had its highlights that I was like, this is awesome. Um, mm. It dealt with like two of my favorite things. So just a brief synopsis. This book is going to cover the Raven Guard, their return from Isvan. Um, if you're following along with us and have read uh, Age of Darkness, Age of Darkness, that's the one. Uh, you'll remember that there was a short story of Commander Brand uh, rescuing Corvus Korax and the rest of the Raven Guard from Isvan. You know what we forgot to do what? before we do this? The alcohol. Holy oh, <laughs> shit. Oh, my God. I am so sorry, fans. <laughs> oh, going back into it. So today, uh, I actually just returned from a soccer trip in Cincinnati. He wasn't playing soccer. No, I was watching little girls play soccer. <laughs> Not a pedophile, though. No, they weren't my little girls, uh, but my, my girlfriend. That may, that may make it sound worse. Yeah, I know. My girlfriend <laughs> coaches uh, Little League soccer, so I go uh, watch that stuff. But, I, I yeah, it's still watching little girls play soccer so i went <laughs> and got two cincinnati beers we're gonna have one cincinnati beer on this podcast the next one on the next podcast I, it's actually dayton dayton is a lot better than cincinnati i mean cincinnati's cool i like cincy a lot uh, but dayton's like yeah i like dayton it's more chill uh this brewing company is called lock 27 in dayton ohio it is called it's always sunny in dayton which we were discussing previous is not a true fact <laughs> it's very not sunny. Yeah, it's a citra like pale ale. It's, it's interesting. It's pretty good. It is good. Uh, so it tastes like a line of googles. A line of googles? Line of googles. Yeah. A line kinda. of googles. Yeah, they're like, like, they're big on shandies and stuff. It's, it's like a shandy yeah. drink. I like it. 6%. Again. 5%. Yep, that's the number. <laughs> Lock 27 brewing. Established in 2012, family owned. It's always sunny in Dayton. Is a citra hopped pale ale. A citrusy explosion hits your nose. I haven't experienced that yet, and is quickly followed by flavors of bright orange, grapefruit, and mango. 
I definitely get the grapefruit. Not the not in the other two. Yeah. The perfect pale ale to give your sticker eating buddy who doesn't like those hoppy beers. Your sticker eating buddy. <laughs> I think people are really big into collecting stickers. I don't know. Yeah, and I I have some friends that do that. I don't collect stickers, but I don't like the hoppy shit, so I guess this worked out. It's Ohio beer. So if we have new Ohio listeners, you guys make decent beer. Back to the book. So, uh, back to the synopsis here. Follows the Raven Guard escaping against Fan 5. Um, how destroyed their legion is. What they do to correct that, they go to the Emperor and get a secret weapon of some mm-hmm. sorts to help rebuild their legion. And the other half of this is how the Alpha Legion are trying to fuck that up. Yeah, this is re- really cool. So we talked about before how like the Alpha Legion, like what they do, doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. But this made sense. Yeah, this makes perfect sense. Like for them just to have a few operatives in like each legion that like no one knows that they're there, they can mm-hmm. fuck up a lot of things. Yeah. So essentially, what you had was the Alpha Legion. Um, if in the short story mm-hmm. um they were the ones that allowed the raven guard to escape now we previously thought oh the alpha legion has to be loyal yeah but no <laughs> that no, is they, the they had a plan they had a whole reason for letting corvus Corus escape it's because they knew that he was going to go to the emperor for help and the cabal from legion mm-hmm. um, that they sided with has decided that has given them vision of the weapon that the emperor is going to give them and they decided that the alpha legion needed to destroy that weapon so the alpha legion was going about doing that business i am super impressed with how well the alpha legion is written in heresy yeah they're fucking cool so their primarchs are they're like a starty size they're so much smaller so like I, i just imagine like a portrait of the primarchs and like the last person you would think being a badass just as like a little guy <laughs> is Alpharus. but man like they are so influential to Harris. so we saw in the short stories in age of darkness how like prevalent they were at taking over planets they probably yeah. were taking over more planets than any other legion um and then we also see them here in deliverance loss like how pivotal they are to just fucking up other legions yeah like Corvus Korath could have ended the war yeah if the alpha legion just didn't stop him here so this is a really cool story because it is very important to the heresy Mm -hmm. easily a nine or a ten importance to the heresy yep i totally agree yeah um so yeah the book is about how the alpha legion sort of thwarts those plans or attempts to thwart those plans i also love the consistency of this that alpha legion story like we get legion which introduced us to the Alpha Legion. Yeah, and the Cabal. And the Cabal and all that. And then we see them in some of these short stories. And then, boom, yeah, Deliverance Lost. Although, remind me, in Legion, did the Alpha Legion know that Alpharus and Omega were twins? Because for some reason, I thought no one knew other than, at that point, the Cabal. I think the Alpha Legion do know. Like okay, the, for some reason, I felt like they mentioned that like no one knows except for us. Yeah, and like who knows like who in the Alpha Legion knows, you know? Who knows? Like, because it was mentioned like several times, like oh, the twin Primarchs. Yeah, and I'm sure they do. And what's interesting to me too is like it talks about all of the operatives in this book. They went through like mind erasing technology, so they don't even know the real names. So legitimately, yeah. all of the Alpha Legion believe they are Alpharius. Which is nuts. Yeah, really insane. That and, like, how they, like, get into other legions, too, by, like, literally stealing their face and being, like, implanted with, like, Mm -hmm. their old memories. Yeah. What? (laughs) So we see this in, um, basically what happens after Isfan is these Alpha Legionnaires take over Raven Guard that were fleeing from Isfan, take their faces, their memories, and implant them into themselves so they can then implant themselves into the Raven Guard Legion. Yeah. So, I really enjoy the Alpha Legion. Mm Mm-hmm. I agree. The Raven Guard, I did not enjoy so much, but do you know what I really enjoyed from this book? What? Corvus fucking Korax. Yeah, Corvus Korax is cool. So, we were texting about this book prior, and you were asking me how I liked it, and I said, one of the things I love is, like, Corvus is written as a better commander than everyone else. Yeah, he is written very well. They also mentioned that, like, 
There's one point he talks to like dueling like other Primarchs, and he apparently is like one of the top duelists. Yeah, as a one one v yeah. one dueler. Yeah, and so one of the things I'll say like when I say Corvus is written as a better commander, what I mean is it doesn't mean he's a better commander than Horus or Fulgrim or whatever. It just means that like the author spent more time writing about like the things he would say to his legion yeah he, he has like four speeches in yeah they're very like they're badass speeches, yeah like very well written that, that's like you get that speech and like you just want to run through the wall for the guy yeah and like you as a reader you get kind of pumped up yeah even like even talks about the, like the alpha legion guy that like you have his pov and he's like wow i actually like, really want to fight <laughs> yeah and corvus like he has so many flaws in this book that become hugely apparent but you still like want to root for yeah, I will say the Raven Guard Legion in, in general, and to me, is very bland. There's some things that Corvus lets others get away with that are like an, another Primarch would never let happen, uh, especially with Bran, um, and yeah. Agapito, and um, the Imperial Fists. Like yeah, he gave a lot of lee- leeway to some people where some other other Primarchs will not do so. Uh, but another thing we get to see in this book is Dorn and the Sigilite again. Yeah, you know for. This is this book made like Macador just feel like an old man, mm-hmm. and like when I think Macador, I imagine him being like a very very strong psyker, right? Mm-hmm. Last two times we've had him in the books, he seemed like just like almost like an errand boy to the emperor in this one, and then before that in first heretic he just gets fucking bitch slapped, and I'm like come on Macador, yes. I expect. You to be a bad motherfucker, and well, you're not being that. The problem with Malkador's character right now is we've seen him literally among giants. There's no yeah. other situation we've seen him. So Malkador is already, in my opinion, very impressive because he is surrounding himself with. He's literally having a conversation with Korax and Dorn. Yep. And they're fighting each other, and he's just standing there. <laughs> yeah. Like he's he is a badass, and he ha- the custodies trust Malkador. That's what I think is interesting. When it comes to the custodies, the number one things, the emperor, the emperor, the emperor, the emperor. But all of them trust Malkador. They yeah. don't trust the other Primarchs. They don't trust Dorne. We've seen that as a problem in the books. Yeah. Dorne and the custodies are constantly conflicting. Malkador doesn't have that issue. I'm pretty sure like the Primarchs like, respect Malkador, too. Most of them, except yeah. for Lorgar. <laughs> yeah, except for Lorgar, but like... Easy. Like, Cor- like, Dorn and Korax definitely respect the Malkador in this book. Yeah, and I, I just expect him to be, like, better depicted than what we've been given. I think we're going to see it. I hope so. I think the thing with Malkador is, like, right now, he, he is the Emperor's heir. Right. But he's, like, the chosen one. Which yeah, yeah. is pretty big. He isn't a phenomenal psyker. But the thing is, like, he's he is a human, not privy to everything the Emperor's thinking. And everyone's going to him, like, hey... What's the Emperor doing? And Malkador's like, fuck. <laughs> Dude, I don't know. The guy doesn't even talk to me. I know. I'm so. running everything right now. I'm way over my head. You thought he was over his head. <laughs> and we see Malkador, like, running the Assassin Orum. And, like, running all of these extra things that Dorn isn't running. So, like, I think Malkador, as a human, is impressive. Already. Yeah. See, I think, like, a Nemesis, like, it was cool. Because, you know, he is running the Assassin Orum. Mm-hmm. Then we have the Bitch Slap. And then we have this, where he literally just becomes possessed by the emperor and becomes his mouthpiece for well, a the bitch slap though is a bitch slap from a prime i know i would very badass killed, that he's still alive that would have killed like pretty much any human oh i agree it's cool that he lived but the fact but that he, he should have got anything. up and just been like boom power of the emperor coming down on yeah, you that would have been pretty crazy uh, but i really love the interaction that we get between dorn and korax i dorn's character is like so awesome to me because he's just like Thank God you're here, and you brought three thousand warriors. Like, that's gonna be super great in the defense of Terra. <laughs> yeah, and Corvus like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I'm not here to defend Terra. And Dorn's like, what the fuck do you mean you're not here to defend Terra? And uh, you get that whole conversation, and like, it's amazing to see Dorn like, okay, Dad left me in charge, <laughs> and he said we need to defend Terra. And so far, you have like, this was one of my favorite parts of the book. He's like going through the legions. This legion's lost, this legion's lost, this legion's lost. And for the first time, you really get Dorne's point of view and how yeah. fucked he thinks he is. Because he's like, right now, the only legions we know where they are is mine 
and your shitty broken region. <laughs> You're like 12 guys. <laughs> we know where you are, so brother, please help me because I know for a fact that we've got like eight coming to us. Yeah, and he's like, oh, where's the scars? He's like, hopefully coming. I have no idea. Scars were supposed to come. I have no idea where the fuck they're going. Yeah. Where are the blood angels? No one can communicate with them. Where where are the ultramarines? No one fucking knows. We yeah. assume they're an ultramar. <laughs> <laughs> what about the wolves? Dealing with Magnus is bullshit. <laughs> Coming back, yeah. Like it's yeah, no one knows. And so you really see for the first time Dorn expressing to another primarch like how desperate and fucked Dorn is. Yeah. <laughs> but Korax makes a really good point. And I was like, damn, like that shouldn't hit Dorn in the face where he's like, You're defending Terra. You're literally waiting for him yeah. to come to you. Like, there is a war going on in the galaxy, and you've already lost mm -hmm. by submitting to your last wall. Yeah. Like, you've given up on all the other defenses. So I'm going to go fight that war, and you stay back and do whatever you have to do. Yeah. Like, that's your job. So, like, I think it's cool we get this conversation, these primarchs that do literally the opposites of each other. Mm -hmm. Like, Dorn is supposed to be this big walled thing and you have Korax who's like at, by the end of the book he's doing what he was built to do a, yeah. sh a small strike forces that are targeting key pivotable, pivotal points in the war and doing like guerrilla warfare shit not something that Dorn's used to so. yeah and I, I kind of like their like whole thing like strike fall back strike yeah they're guerrilla warfare yeah. so they're, they're I, the I really style. like their their style yeah and one, th one thing I do find interesting is how this book shows that if a legion goes against what they're built for, they tend to fail. Yeah. So uh, one of the things we see with Korax that's a pretty reoccurring theme, in my opinion, is he's desperate. He is very desperate. He makes a lot of really rash decisions that even as a reader you're like man he keeps crossing lines and lines and lines and he exposes himself to when he's making these acts you mm. know he's like oh let's inc keep creating warriors and his generals are trying to tell him like hey that might be too fast yeah like, we may run into issues and of course like stuff does happen so it's like there's a lot of foreshadowing in this book anytime you see Korax Korax is like stressed out and he's like, this won't happen, it will. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, he's like, it's like the end, too, which I'm not going to spoil anything, but, like, you have a part where Bran is off on the ship. Yeah. He's like, look, if something happens, like, I'm destroying all of this. Do not go there. Yeah, it was a really cool scene. Something that I don't think another Primarch would let happen. Mm -hmm. But I think there was that moment that Korax realized, like, holy shit, like, I have one of my Legion custodi custodies no, he lost. Astartes. Asian Astartes, <laughs> flat out, like, ignoring my command. Yeah. Like, he is not only ignoring my command, but threatening to, like, go completely against the Raven Guard mm -hmm. because of how far I took it. Yeah. But also, like, I think we should, like, preface this, too, by saying that, like, he has been with the, or with Korax since, like, the beginning. Yeah. Like, he is one of the OGs of the planet. Mm -hmm. He came into oh, Legion. command. Yeah. yeah. So, like, him, Aga, Agapito, Agapito, those are the two main ones. There's other Solaro. ones. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a couple couple people. Let's talk about some downsides of this book. Sure. Some parts that I didn't enjoy. The Alpha Legion has infiltrated the Raven Guard, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of characters that are introduced for the sole purpose of being revealed as Alpha Legion. That do literally nothing throughout the entire book. Yeah. So I thought that was very strange. You're kind of on the edge of your seat. Wondering like who the fuck is traitor who's not. Because mm -hmm. it, it only follows one Alpha Legionnaire, right? I think so. It's I, hard to say because they all call say. themselves the Yeah. So like you really don't know who it's following. But it makes it seem like it's following this like one guy. Yeah. Um, yeah, who knows? It, it, yeah it, now like, that you said that thinking like, about it hard. at the end like once the end was revealed i was like wait a minute because i'm pretty sure like one of the people that revealed themselves said that they did something 
which is something I thought they like one Alpharius did. Yeah. So I'm like, wait a minute. Are you telling me that we've been reading from the point of view of Alpharius and it's actually been like three or four different people? Dude, that's that's cool. That's really cool. Like the well done because like such or a downside because that's really cool. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. But the, I guess like the yeah. issue is like the characters that they were um, being portrayed as yeah. didn't do anything. No, not at all. Uh, there was one character that I thought followed really well, and he was just like a regular Raven Guard soldier. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was a really good character, I thought. Um, the What I consider like the original Alpharius. Yeah. The person I thought we were following the whole time. Um, but like there are other characters in the book that they would be like, they revealed themselves like, I'm Alpharius. It was supposed to be this big shock factor, and I just didn't get it. Because I'm like, I don't know who you are. Yeah, I was like, I don't even remember you. Yeah. But like, I remember like one point I thought the uh, alpha legion guy heard like one of the sergeants say something it was like different like when everyone else would say he's like huh that guy might also be alpha legion yeah because the alpha legion people didn't know who was alpha legion yeah and at one point they're like making their way through um some maze and one of the guys says something and he's like i may have to kill him because he might expose us yeah but he he had no idea whether he was alpha legion Mm -hmm. no idea but he ended up not being he was not, nope. We don't know. He just died. We don't know if True. he was Alpha Legion or not. I'm assuming not because the Alpha Legionnaire probably wouldn't sacrifice his life for a Raven Guard. Yeah, I agree. But yeah. Uh, so that was a bit of a downside for me. The other thing that was a downside is there were a lot of like characters and stories that I don't think really got like wrapped up or didn't really go anywhere. Um so one of the one of the things I think is like the guy in the previous short story that had the visions or mm-hmm. the dreams. Yeah. He's like a character in the first half of this book and then goes nowhere. And, so, and, then, and then he comes back the in the end. Very end <laughs> for no reason. Yeah. And the ending is super strange with him. Um, we'll talk yeah. about the ending and how we feel about the ending and what happens there cuz I wasn't like a huge fan of the way this book ended uh, for everyone but the Raven yeah, also, the thing that I I liked and also didn't like this, like, I liked that we were able to get Korax's background, but it was really random when it was placed. Mm. One thing I will say is a lot of Korax's decisions mirror decisions he made in his past, which is yeah. why we kept going back and forth. But I feel like it just added so much, like, just so many more pages. Like, mm-hmm. I honestly would have rather have had, like, a short story of, yep. like, his upbringing. Yeah, I get that. It, like, I'd almost rather have had, like, that as a short story than what we got in Age of Darkness and, like, start off with the short story in here. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean... And just, like, maybe even just make it a little shorter. It was something I liked and also disliked yeah. at the same time. Yeah. And, like, it, it was it was kind of cool, but... And then we had, uh... Because the short story, the stories of his past would interrupt, like, crucial moments. Yes, and I'm like... You were, like, super cool. into something, <laughs> and he was like, let's go back to my past. I'm like, fuck, like, I want to see what you, decision you make. Yeah. So... It's kind of frustrating. Also, can I, I kind of just want... Uh, this isn't really a... Spoiler. Yeah, but, like, so we... In his past, it talks about him, like, being able to become invisible. Mm-hmm. He doesn't, like, do that again until, like, the end of the book. And I'm like, why? Yeah, so... Why aren't you just going invisible and killing everyone in Isfahan? Yeah. So, he does. <laughs> uh, it's not talked about in this book, which is super interesting. Uh, maybe it's talked about in Korax? I don't know. But essentially, each one of the Primarchs has an ability. Right. A psychic ability that they may not know about yet. Like, Lorgar literally has the ability to just influence people. Um, Makes sense. Vulcan is a perpetual. Yep. Um, Corvus's ability, he can literally manipulate people's minds to make him invisible. Like, they don't recognize him on any way, on scanners, on whatever. Mm-hmm. Um and what's really cool about Korax is he discovered his power, like, really early on. He's been using it. So he will just turn invisible and kill people that way. But there is a portion of the story, not in this book, where it talks about him on his fan. And now he literally wanders the traitor's camp and sees everything they're doing with all the bodies and Ferris Vance's body and all kinds of crazy mm-hmm. shit. Um, but, yeah, I don't know why he chooses not to use it more. Perhaps he thinks it's a secret that he has to hide because he doesn't I would abuse the fuck out of that. Yeah. Because it's massive. He could have, like, fucking murdered tons of people on this fan. Yeah. I mean... Could have turned the tide of that almost. 
So yeah, why not just go invisible when Night Hunter comes at you? Kill Lorgar. Mm-hmm. If you don't want to fight Night Hunter, just fucking fuck off. But yeah. you could have at least killed Lorgar. Come on, man. I think it's harder to do when there's people looking at you. Right? Like, you can't just, yeah. like, boom, go <laughs> invisible. Like, Where'd it's I go? more of, like, an entry <laughs> yeah. stealth thing. Um, and then at the same time, yeah. It would have been complicated as fan, but he does go back to the traitor camp at his fan with that ability. And we can compare it to things like Lehman Russ's psychic scream. Mm-hmm. Like, each of the permits have some sort of psychic thing that they can tap into. And we'll see some of them arise. I don't know if all of them do. Um, but yeah. I was going to say, man, I wonder which one's the most OP. And then I'm like, Magnus. Magnus is the most OP. <laughs> Magnus is just his whole he is power psychic. is the psychic ability, yeah. Um, being you have like Sanguinius with the blood rage and shit like that. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't like how they didn't use that. I, uh, going back to like the characters that weren't really well fleshed out, there's a couple more that I think didn't really come like full circle. That that commander was one of them. Um, whoever the other alpha trader was. So yeah. there's like this big kind of reveal at the end that there's some other operative out there. And I have my theories and I'll talk about it in the review. But the book kind of ends with like a, I'm trying to say this without ruining it, with like a, a resolution. But it never tells you like how they got to that yeah. resolution. And that's supposed to be this big mystery. So I'm hoping, it's, it's like one of those frustrating things. Like I'm hoping we get a reveal, but... It kind of only seems like it would be important in this book. Yeah. Like, it would be huge in this book. But if we, like, get the reveal later on, like, ten books later, I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, I kind of remember that. Like, kind of mm-hmm. cool. You know, it would have been huge if it was here. So, that would have been a lot of fun, I think. But they messed up on that a little bit. So, that's kind of a disappointing one. Another thing that was disappointing to me, even though I love Korok's a commander, he was kind of dumb. He was. He didn't, he literally talked about how, like, he didn't have the intelligence of a lot of his other Primarch brothers. Um, Like, he wasn't able to figure out, like, any of the gene tech that the Emperor gave him. So, he just relied on the Emperor's implanted memories. Yeah. I feel like a lot of other Primarchs would have, like, tried to figure it out and been successful. Yeah. Yeah, I could have seen that. Um... Um, He makes command decisions that are weird like for instance in the short story we have the this is a really good example i think of like corvus is like he just doesn't analyze everything he only analyzes what's in front of him so like in the short story when they get rescued we have the world eaters ship retreat right yeah and corvus is like that's weird he never investigates (laughs) yeah and he never like he, he that's not like a warning sign to him like he's not like Huh, I wonder if there's something up. Because almost every other Primarch would be like, we shouldn't have been able to escape. Yeah. Something is happening. Like, why are the traitors letting us leave? And he would have questioned that. And then you would, like, it's uh, quite a few of the Primarchs probably would have come to the conclusion of, something's fucked up, who's the first person we look at? Alpharius. Yeah, That not only that, too, like, why, like, wouldn't you think, like, okay... Are there is there anyone here that could be a traitor too? Yeah, because they get privy to is some insane sensitive uh, information, some yeah. like very like high security stuff. Yeah, like and no the, one was vetted. No one. The emperor literally was like, "Hey, if this all goes in the wrong hands, everything's gonna be fucked up." You think at that point, Corvus would be like, "Okay, let's put some insane security measures yeah. down." Like, why wouldn't, like, if, especially, like, going down, like, sure, like, you have to go through a maze at this one point, and it's super complicated. Before I would... they got in there, he should have been like, okay, who's, let's vet everybody. Yeah. The custodies. He literally just lets, like, a fucking Mechanicum dude walk yeah. in. Just goes like, oh, Malkador vouches for him. Yeah. Whoa. The Emperor <laughs> said if this falls in the wrong <laughs> hands, and the Mechanicum... Is like super loose. Like we yeah, have yeah. no <laughs> idea what the fuck is on the Like they are siding with whoever like gives them more technology. Yep. Like the Mechanicum's loyalty is so thin. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Oh yeah, just have them come with us. Like I know one is needed, but you should definitely 
that a lot more than what he did. So that was weird to me, like how just loosey goosey he was with shit. Yeah. Um, he sees uh, one thing that also never went anywhere that they didn't write about was the guy who had the visions, the dreams. It was talked about in the beginning of the book. Bran was like, "Let's not tell Korax. He doesn't yeah. really stress about well, it." Well, and I it's thought that, that one would, captain. Yeah. I thought it would like lead to something. No. Like maybe they found out like the Alpha Legion planted those dreams in him or whatever. Corvus never asks. No, even like mid like a note at one point, he's like, "Oh, I should find out like why they broke from their station." Never does. Never asks. Never. That's why I think like a lot of times these books they have grander ideas. Yeah. And then they like, and you can tell like. They cut them halfway through writing the book. Yep. And they're like, oh, I want this strand to lead somewhere, this strand to lead somewhere, and then it just doesn't. Uh, that's a big one for me. Like, why did why did Corax never ask this guy? Why did this conversation never come up? Yeah. Because that guy, I think, should have been a bigger character. And then he it was just quelled. He did nothing. Yeah. And they, like, pushed him out of the story at the end. It was really weird. One thing that I didn't like, so at one point, there's a rebellion that's happening. They have a giant fucking titan. The rebels? Yeah. Yeah. How did no one see a giant fucking titan this entire well, time? No, no, no. The problem is the titan was in being controlled by the traitor mechanicum. So it wasn't like they had no idea that they were going to betray him. So the titan, the mechanicum yeah. took control of the titan. So it wasn't like... It wasn't like they were building a, a Titan. It was already there. It just turned traitor. The whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> now, the Rebellion was another weird thing. Because there were less Raven Guard. And there was a Rebellion of some Mechanicum and some, like, old people that were left over from Deliverance's past that weren't, like, completely deal with. They were yeah, like which guilds. makes me wonder how long ago was Deliverance changed it probably i would say 100 years max because a long time for humans to live korax was second to last primark crown i think it went korax alfarius well it might have yeah korax alfarius um so korax like by the time that was discovered and we know that that the whole thing only lasted 200 years yeah uh, so I think it was like less than a hundred years. Still, By those guys got to be old, started. right? Well, they have a lot of like human descendants. Well, not descendants. They can ex- extend their life by augmenting sure. and shit like that. But they didn't. I don't know. Normally, that shit's like mentioned, like oh, his augments or whatever. Mm-hmm. Didn't really mention any. Yeah, I, I know that like humans, rich humans, yeah, can live to like 150 in the 40k universe. Also, the years are very different. Yeah, so they're they're like, I'm really glad that this book mentioned it. Cause yeah, because like the seventh birthday was like 19 years old or 16, something. Yeah, 17, yeah, something like that. It was the sixth birthday was 17 years old. Yeah. Um, so I, I like how they mentioned that a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, like literally that character was he had like an assistant too, mm-hmm. and the assistant was he had like he a had point of view and everything. Yeah, POVs like from the assistant and like he didn't happen ever again yeah and they kind of just like abandoned those characters literally at the end they abandoned those characters. yeah i mean honestly that's like 100 pages that i mean maybe um, at least like 30 pages they could have cut out 70 yeah and i mean this is a long book it, is a long it book. was like 460 pages 470 pages yeah no yeah yeah it's it was interesting why they made a lot of the decisions in the beginning that i just don't think panned out at the end yeah uh, like like a good read but there are some flaws in this book. Yeah, it was long. Didn't have. Like, you compare this to something like Fulgrim, you know what I mean? Yeah, at least like, Fulgrim had, like... Everything was tied. Yeah, it was, like, super long, but, man... Every story collapsed on itself. Yeah, it had such a, like, and... such a high high that, like, this never really got that super high high. Yeah, I never Like, I think, like, a... that, like, when, the, like, the, all, like, the Alpha Legion, like, exposed themselves, like, I think that was supposed to be, like, ooh, but it was just, like, Because you ooh. didn't know the characters. Yeah. Yeah, so this never had, like, a put-the-book-down moment. But, like, I think if, like... Because I actually thought, like, Agapito was going to be one. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of characters. So, Ag- so Agapito 
kind of just running through the characters. I know we're already like halfway through the podcast. Shit. <laughs> so running through the characters real quick. Uh, we have the big one. So uh, Corvus Corax. Yep. Obviously the Primarch. You see Dorn, and um, you'll get like a couple command room shots of Horus and Erebus and Abaddon and all mm-hmm. them. Um, but the big Raven guard you have Bran, which was actually my favorite character. Yeah, he's cool. I like him. Uh, Bran was the uh, commander that saved Corvus Corax at Isfahan. He was one of the original people um, that helped Corvus Corax liberate Deliverance. And then he also got put in charge of like the new recruits going forward, yep. so he's kind of in charge of that. And then we have Agapito. I didn't know this till the end. I don't know why I didn't look. It makes a lot of sense. Agapito and Bran are brothers. Yeah, I didn't think that for the longest time until they said that. I was like... And you like, go, look, they have the like, same last name. Oh, I didn't even recognize it's Brand it. It's Bran, Nev, and Agapito, Nev. Shit. Yeah, so they're <laughs> brothers, but, and, and, which, yeah, I didn't talk about it at all. Yeah, like, because at one point he's like, why are you lying to me, brother? I just figured it was because Battle Brothers. Yes, that's exactly what I thought. And then it was like a glimpse into Korax's past, and they were all sitting in the command panel. Yeah. And Korax, Korax was like, oh, I'll, I'll go talk to the brothers. They were literally... Yeah, I don't brain. know why that, I didn't pick that up. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Akapito was on Isvan 5, um, and he was just, like, commander. Uh, and then he gets put in charge, because basically there's only, like, so many Raven Guard left. He gets put in charge of, like, all of them. Yeah. Uh, after that's after they're alive. And then you have Solaro and Ohlone. So they break they break down the Raven Guard after Isvan 5 into three sections. Three fourths of them with Agapito. The rest are like fast attack squads or like specialist squads yeah. that they give to to uh, Solaro and Ohlone. And then you have like people that like they're just kind of there. Uh, you have Lacrado Nastil. Don't remember. He's just a Raven guard that pops up every once in a while. This guy kind of comes up. Uh, Hadrag Dor. No, oh, yeah, he's a sergeant. He, yeah, he's like some sort of sergeant that like is in charge of like a decent group of people. Uh, Karami Ort. It's revealed pretty early on that Karami Ort is an Alpha Legionnaire, um, and that's like the kind of main Alpha Legion character that you follow. Um, it's Karami Ort. Yeah. Uh, Belisar Korthari. Lucar Ferrani, Marco <laughs> Diz, Steradon Benalt. Uh, Benalt, I know Benalt. He's the uh, tech marine that was randomly yeah, yeah. like talked about. Yeah, like yeah. for no reason. <laughs> like, so uh, there's another thing that's so frustrating. It's like this book will literally have pages worth of information that is completely invaluable. Like the, there is an entire like five pages dedicated to Agapito going to Benalt for Benalt to s- talk about how like Oh, the traders at Isvan 5 were using these special rounds. And I found these rounds and recreated the ammunition. Yada, yada, yeah, yada. I'm pretty sure uh, Basar, Luca, and Marco, they are in the maze. Yeah, they're in the maze. That's the only time we hear them, I think. Which one is the Psyker? Balsar? Yeah. Yeah, Balsar's the Psyker. He comes up later, but another, it was like another thing that like meant nothing. Yes. Like, I you have a whole point of view from him <laughs> at the end. And he's like, I really didn't use my psychic abilities. I kind of used them earlier. Like, <laughs> oh, that was a cool scene. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about in the preview, because that actually means a lot. Yeah. The scene with uh, him. But, yeah, a lot of these characters, like, it'll do like a POV, and like nothing happens. Yeah. They're like worthless characters. It sucks. There was a lot of like, Stuff that like could have been and missed. This this book is good, but it's kind of like getting a hand job. You know, it's <laughs> like it's like okay, I'm 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 gonna take a hand job. It's nice, but like sometimes I can do this better myself. Exactly. <laughs> like I mean, man, like if you just twisted right here at this time, it would have been way better. <laughs> uh, like there was just a lot missed out here, and there's always there's better out there. You yeah, could, you could go stray from a hand job. Just get the hand job entirely. And yeah, just, just blow me, please. Wow, <laughs> imagine that. Um, uh, we have 
Navar Hef. So Navar Hef. Yeah, oh, you yeah. missed my boy Vincent. Vincent six. Our apothecary. He's apothecary. cool. I love. So it was really cool to get this like concept that he's the chief apothecary. But you have this conversation with him when you meet him, where he's like, "Yeah, I'm the chief apothecary." That's because there's only seven of us left, <laughs> and I'm the oldest one. For some reason, I'm the oldest one. And they're like, yeah, so we're putting you in charge of a gene project. And he's like, I'm sure that Corvus Corax trusts you. He's like, I don't trust myself. I have <laughs> no idea how to do any of this shit. Uh, but he's like a, he's cool. He's pretty cool. He does some cool shit. And then you have Navar Hef. Navar is a, he's an important character um, because of like what he is. Yeah, he is one of the rookies who are created from yeah, the, from the new gene weapon, scene. Yeah. The new gene scene. Uh, and like it kind of talks about like everything that happens with mm-hmm. the new and it's it's really cool because they're like he's like ten years old. Yeah, they're super young in this one. Yeah, and it's kind of and... crazy to think about the fact that like you literally take ten year olds and transform them into superhumans. And it's not like it's not like a gradual thing. Like they like wake up and it's like whoa, a few I'm days. A fucking murder. I'm like damn, good for you. This new gene seed, yeah, because previously it was like a few months. Yeah, and you know, but this new one that he gets is like instantaneous so it's really cool to see like brandon and agapito argue over it because they're like hey we're really just like taking 10 year old boys and giving them big muscles <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not a good idea that we make a few thousand of them yeah because at one point they go on like a training mission and brandon's like hey they murdered everybody but they took a quite a few casualties that they yeah have. it was like if they were actually you know better trying like we would have probably had no casualties. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of kind of interesting. Um, you have some custodies in here. Um, they don't really play a big role. No, they're there for the maze. And here and there. Yeah, they. Like I can't believe like none of them like found up. a like a traitor. I thought because they, they were they like may investigating. Have been like, in a while there, I thought that they may have been... I never thought that. I figured that, like... Well, when they showed up to the system, like, oh, we're going to deliver this armor to you. I was like, that's super suspicious. Like, I thought that those might have been, like, yeah. Alpha Legion people. Like, oh, they came in contact with these people. Let's disguise ourselves as them or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, but they didn't really do a lot. Mm. Um... Oh, I was talking not the I was talking the Imperial Fists. Yeah, I knew what you meant. My bad, because we <laughs> the custodians I never suspected to be traitors. The Imperial Fists, so you yeah, I could have saying? seen the Captain Nari's or whatever his name was. Yeah. Nari's, yeah, uh, it doesn't. Miss Although me. I really like the um the deal that they made. Well, not even the deal when they were trying to get access to the planet, and Brandon was giving him so much shit because when the Raven Guard went to Terra. They got they a got bunch shit. of shit. So that's another <laughs> one of the things that like I thought Korax was really dumb about. Cause, so basically what happens is the Imperial Fish show up into Deliverance um, Orbital. Yeah. What are that? Orbital something. No, no, no. They're, they're trying to come in. Yeah. And Brand's like, hey, we're about to shoot you out of the fucking sky because you never even said that you entered the system. And he was like, the Imperial Fist was like, well, we didn't want to let everyone know that the Imperial Fist have entered the system because we're trying to do all this whole thing in secrecy. But Brand's fucking right. <laughs> yeah, no, he's not right. Because but he's also just destroyed. giving it back. Yeah, but uh, yes. Because it's exactly what the Imperial Fist did then. <laughs> That's very true. But they, they, but Korax, this is what killed me. When they went into the Terra, the soul system, Korax Korax was like, he's just doing his job. Yeah. But then when they do it the other way, Chorus Cars gets pissed at Bran. Like, why would you let that happen? Bran is like the only dude that has his shit together in yep. this entire book, I feel like. He's like, okay, they're going to do a procedure. We need to do the same procedure. If Chorus Cars says they're right, then they need to be right all the time. Not just when <laughs> yeah. like, you feel like they're right. You know, He's like, hey, there's some sketchy shit going on. The only thing I think Bran did wrong was not talk to Korax about half the shit that Bran went through. Yeah. He didn't talk to him about Agapito. He didn't talk to him about the guy having the dreams. He kept a lot of information from Korax, and Korax isn't insightful enough to look for that. That's why I think Bran kind of messed up for him. 
Yeah, still a cool character. I really just enjoyed that interaction. That was hilarious. Bran is, Bran is a lot of fun. And then you get a really cool scene. I will talk about in the review between the Imperial Fist and the Bran about a bet that they made. Yeah. And I was like, that's a cool bet. Yeah, and it was funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, we see Fabius Bile for a second. Yeah. It's interesting because I know what Fabius does. Yeah, in the future. In like the future, future. He's yeah. one of the oldest Space Marines. Yeah, I know he still he alive. does shit. He does do. Shit. I know, like specifically some shit with like Fulgrim. He does some shit with Horus. Ooh. That is like directly linked to this book. Does he do sh- something to Abaddon? Is that why Abaddon's the way he is now? I don't know. But I, I could know see that. that he attempts to clone Horus in the future, and he succeeds. Hmm. Uh, not, like, amazingly. But, like, you you know the shit that he does with Fulgrim, though, right? Yes. Like, with Ferris Manus? Yes. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure, like, this is how he does it. Yeah, it makes sense. So this book, like, describes how um, Fabius Bile is doing what he's able to do currently in 40K. That's cool. Yeah, he's an interesting character. I'm, like, a huge fan. I don't like him. Yeah, I, I didn't like him in Fulgrim. I'm not gonna like him in the future. Yeah, he's just like a. He seems like the evil scientist. Yes. I kind of. It's too much. To too much. Yeah, and he kind of like. I don't like his character. Because he seems like a. Uh, Deus Machina. God yes. Machina. Be like yep. oh, something that's difficult that the traders need to get over. Fabius Bile creates some sort of. He clones Horus or yeah. something stupid, you know what I mean? So that's, yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on him. Yep, after that we get Haston Luthris Arminitin. We see him for five pages. Yep, he, yeah. Captain of some fortress that's supposed to be the best. Yeah, let's talk about the fortress. So <laughs> at the back end of the book, Corvus Corax is talking about how they want to invade a fortress called the Perfect Fortress. It was created by the Emperor's children, which is weird. <laughs> because, so the, this is literally, I love, like, going back to things we said in past podcasts. Yeah. But like, I was right. Fulcrum is really good at everything, but not the best at anything. Yep. <laughs> so, like, he makes this perfect fortress. He's like, he literally calls it the perfect fortress because he's full of them. He thinks everything's, like, amazing. Oh, yeah. But poor Ravel and Dorn would have done better. <laughs> Yeah, probably. Yeah, I talked a little about how Porter Rob was influential in the creation of his perfect mm-hmm. fortress, but in no way, shape, or form was his fortress perfect. Yeah, I mean, it got taken down by a broken legion and some humans. In a few hours. Yeah. When you compare it to the fortresses that the Iron Warriors Shit. Made, <laughs> and they throw Titan legions after them. And they're like, eh, bring it. And they, they kind of end up winning. They literally commandeer like all the fucking spaceships, yeah. and they're like, "Okay, well, you guys all died, and some of us live, <laughs> and we're taking your spaceships." And it, yeah, dude, wasn't even a Primark. It was like, this is an old captain. <laughs> yeah. So, I, the whole perfect fortress thing was kind of silly. I love that they called it. Oh, there's another thing that happens in this book. No, I also am like, oh shit, this is amazing. They do like a training test with the new like recruits. Oh yeah. And I love, like, there's, <laughs> they're talking about, hey, we shouldn't throw them into, like, some serious shit right away. And Corvus Quarax is like, I know. Which is why I have a word bearers thing that they can go attack. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, it's the word bearers. That's no fucking problem. And they just fucking annihilate the word bearers. Like, these new recruits just demolish You them. know, speaking of that, like, because, like, next book we have No No Fear. I can't believe it's the fucking word bearers that are going after the Ultramarines. I know. Like, they're just going to throw so many people at them. And, like, they're going to use some psychic shit. So We get to see some cool stuff. Um, I think another thing that I enjoy, we get to see how fucked up some of the traitor legions are becoming. Mm-hmm. And you get to see how certain legions, like the Alpha Legion, are like, this is did weird. we choose the right side? Uh, because we know that the Alpha Legion is not technically on Horus' side. Like, yes, they joined Horus. Yeah, they're but, on... Really, they're on their own side, trying to pick whatever fate they like the best. Well, the concept of them is they're on humanity's side. Yeah. They actually believe that they're fulfilling the Emperor's plan because they think that the best outcome of this heresy is for Horus to win slightly. Yeah. <laughs> Which makes sense. 
Yeah. And we compare it to what actually happened, and I would prefer Forrest to win slightly. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, the Alpha Legion did good. And we talked about this previously, though, how we think the Alpha Legion were kind of being played. Like, they were really cool, but it's a shame they were being played like a fucking fiddle. Turns out, they're no playing more. them. No more. The Alpha Legion are fucking sick. They, yeah. They don't do, they don't do anything wrong. No. They just, they have a plan and they follow it. Because previously we were discussing that the Cabal's goals for the Alpha Legion really just benefit the Cabal. Yeah. Like, oh, you weaken both sides, and then all of a sudden the Xenos powerhouse is able to do some crazy shit. But the Alpha Legion isn't with the Cabal. They no. literally are with humanity. Yeah, they're like, and they're cool, like, we just follow this because we kind of like the idea. Yeah, and you get this sense of like, if their idea is like, we'll make the Alpha Legion super strong, but I don't think like Alpharius has like a hatred for people or no. the Imperium in general. He doesn't. Like I think he like likes the Imperium. So I don't think like the Alpha Legion having more power is like a bad thing. No. You know what I mean? So I I just like the Alpha Legion. Like, I do. The They're more cool. I read, like they really sh- like shined in the books. I how agree. Badass they are and how much they do for Horus. I really hate in this book how Horus kind of like dislikes and distrusts Alpharius he should distrust Alpharius but a hundred percent but he kind of views him as like a weaker Primarch mm-hmm. and like fucking Abaddon like tries to threaten Alpharius yeah that yeah. was weird yeah well because he's about the same size <laughs> yeah I guess that's true the other thing is like Alpharius is obviously a superior fighter to Abaddon yeah well it should be because he's a Primarch but um the Alpha Legion is just grossly underestimated. We also don't even know if that's the real Alpharius. That's true. Because, I mean, that, like, at one point in that scene, he, like, is leaving, and he's like, oh, fuck, that was kind of scary. <laughs> yeah, which I'm sure it will be. I mean, a Horus in general is just probably a scary motherfucker right now. Yeah. But, I don't know, it probably is Alpharius. Because he did talk about how, like, he remembered meeting Horus multiple times in the past, and how he didn't feel threatened being amongst the other primates. means nothing. <laughs> like a random fucking soldier who knows but you would not think... even a sergeant just like a ra- like yeah you want to go meet Horus today i don't i don't want to it was cool to see like how they keep their secrets amongst the legions mm-hmm. like what like i i have some theories that i think you'd be excited for in a review yeah, okay some alpha legion stuff anything else we want to talk about in our preview, I mean, mm. is, it, is there some shit that you want to shoot? Some stuff you want to cover? Um, We're outside of the book, we can do our ranking of the book real quick. Yeah. Uh, so personal enjoyment, I put this like a little under Fallen Angels. So pro- I put it at six. As mm. far as heresy, it could be a ten. Yeah, it's really important. Uh, yeah, I'm, like, right there with you. Like, I, I almost exactly. I'm going to try and pull up here. Like, I would put it at a 7 with Fallen Angels because I did really enjoy it. But, yeah, there are some things I'm like, ah, this could have been better. It's definitely on the lower half for me. I think it's right above Flight of Isaac Steam for me. Interesting. Which puts it, like, right below Fallen Angels. I think I, think I like it so much because of the Alpha Legion stuff. Yeah, that's true. Because I think they really made it. Just like, especially just having like that point of view of like being like the traitor like in the midst, and you're like, huh. For me, like it it, it reaches the top of like Nemesis and Flight of Eisenstein, but doesn't quite break into the other like Legion books that we get. You know. Interesting. Yeah, because like I, like I think you know looking back like. Yeah, Fulgrim, Legion, Horus Rising, False Gods. Descent is obviously shit. <laughs> Battle for the Abyss, I think, was amazing. It's definitely up there as far as personal enjoyment goes for me. Mechanically, it's pretty low. I'm kind of excluding Tales of Heresy and Age of Darkness. Just like, sure, yeah. yeah. Um, and then you have Fallen Angels. Like, I don't think this is as good as Fallen Angels. Yeah, that's why I put like right underneath Fallen Angels. It's not as good as Thousand Suns. It's not as good as First Heretic. It's not as good as Prospero Burns. Um, and then you have like that kind of area where it's like Nemesis, Flight of Eisenstein. Like, they're not bad books like some of the other ones we've read. Yeah. But they're not like breaking that barrier. And definitely not breaking the barrier above it. Yeah. So I put this like right at the top of that tier. That's fair. Yeah. 
<sighs> Anything crazy happening? Anything we got from the Discord? Um, I don't think so. I haven't heard a response about the shot yet. I'm a little disappointed in that. Yeah, what the mm-hmm. hell? What call Come on, day? train How wreck. How many more shots do we have to do, train wreck? <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I kind of wanted to mention over on Deliverance. I don't think so. Um, any new tabletop things? No. What you want to talk about? No? I'm, ra- I'm wrapping up some Thousand Sun stuff. About to build Magnus. No, that's gonna be sick. I almost have my grants at two thousand points. Yeah, we'll get do some two thousand point games. I think like once he's at two thousand points, we'll definitely have at least a couple, two or th- two or three battle reports that we can start filming, and we'll kind of expand from there. So. Yeah, I got a lot of building and painting left to do. So a couple painting. characters I need to get. Pain in the ass. Yeah, we definitely want to make sure that all of the material we bring onto the battle reports are painted. Um, yeah, because it just looks better. Um, so much to paint we have fucking terrain to paint yeah we have a fuck ton of terrain we need to paint so we're trying to get there we We are we are Mm -hmm. um you're going on vacation i am going on vacation um it's gonna be fucking great it's gonna be all be away for a week Mm -hmm. going to florida i'm moving into a new apartment super pumped about that yeah that'll be a good time big ass couch big fan big ass couches dude you don't like them but i love them I i like two couches yeah, I'm like an exceptional guy. My sectional, it's like so big that like I can't, like if I sit all the way back, my feet go into the ground. See, I don't like that. I know you don't. You're I, so I like to be able guy. to be like, like if I want to, you know, eat at the table, like the coffee mm-hmm. table, I can just be right there. Like a fucking rat. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> no, like you can, you can easily fit like six people on this couch and sleep. It's nuts. Yeah, I'm glad I'm not helping you move that in. Yeah, so we've <laughs> talked. I think we're gonna have to like hoist it over a railing, cause we're on the second floor. <laughs> so that's gonna be a lot of fun. That sounds like a good time. Mm-hmm. Um, we might want to end this one a little early. If we're just like ranting about our lives now. Uh, let's do this. Is something we can do. Books that are coming up that we're looking forward to. Mm-hmm. I'm really excited for No No Fear. I think it's gonna be fucking of incredible. I'm excited. I'm excited for all the books coming up. What do we got here? We've got No No Fear. The Primarchs. Fucking sick. Fear to Tread. I know the Primarchs is supposed to be a really good Fulgrim store in there. That I'm really excited about. What is Fear to Tread? Uh, Fear to Tread. Is that the one with Portarabo and Fulgrim going into? I think so. That one's going to be fucking sick. Because they go into like some weird Elder. Or is that Shadows of Treachery? It might be Fear to Tread. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Shadows of Treachery is a short story. Uh right. Damn, we're going to have a lot of those coming up. We need to start thinking of our special episodes for those. Angel of Sermonatus. Super fucking pumped for that because that's Blood Angel shit. Yeah, that should be cool. And then we have Betrayer. I don't know if Betrayer That's the about, it's continuation of um, Battle Cow. Written by ADB. Yep. So that'll be a word bearer's perspective, I'm assuming. And we have Market Cow. And then the one I'm really looking for. Vulcan fucking lives. Oh my god! Can't wait till I get <laughs> Finally some Vulcan salamanders. Lives. Yeah. So at the end of this, in this book, we, we literally get told salamanders are dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're all dead. The Wigan fucking, they're not even a legion anymore. <laughs> it's just so sad. Yeah, but there's so many books I'm looking forward to coming yeah. up. Like I think the next like ten are just gonna be awesome, awesome, awesome. Deliverance Lost didn't hold up to my expectations, but it was still good. Honestly, I think it exceeded mine because I heard it was really bad. Oh, really? Yeah. I was like, I was kind of hopeful, but there are definitely some things in it that are. Honestly, like look at the cover. I thought it wasn't going to be very good because it's the only like bright colored one. I was like, ah, oh, like that's this weird. Cover. Seeing like Corvus Korak. It's just so bright compared to the other ones. Like it almost looks like happy. Like Korax you have like the at you with a jetpack, you have like the sun claw. in the background, like it looks nice, like it just looks like, like a typical, like sci-fi book. Yeah, I got asked by like five people at the soccer games because I was reading this. Sometimes <laughs> they're like, "What are you reading?" I was like, "How do I fucking explain this to people?" <sighs> what do you think of religion and getting rid of it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. 
All right. Well, I think that's gonna wrap up our Wilderness Lost. Yep. Um, that was a preview, guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. We'll be. We'll be we're, we're about right to record now. it again, yeah. First, but yeah. so we'll the, be wearing the same clothes. We'll I, be more drunk though. Yeah, hopefully. I'm not feeling anything yet. This is. I am. This is weird. I got really drunk the other night, so my tolerance is probably high tonight. Your liver's working overtime, yeah. For yeah. Sure. But um, we'll be back soon for our review of Deliverance Lost. Um, if you want to talk to us, uh, ask us questions, have any recommendations, you can do that by joining our Twitter or just messaging us on Twitter. That's at Heresy Lodge. We have our Discord pinned to our Twitter. You can also email us at theheresylodge at gmail.com. Also, please, if you're watching the YouTube, like our video, subscribe to us, helps us out. And anything that comes from there, everything comes back into the podcast. So I expect better equipment, more armies for us to do battle reports and shit like that. So just heads up. Also, probably more alcohol, which is kind of why we're here. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Yep, so that's it, guys. We'll be back soon. Have a great weekend, and by the time you hear this, I will be in Florida enjoying my time. Mm -hmm. Hopefully drunk on a beach. Have a good one, guys.